session and posting it just so that you guys know. And so uh, there is a FOIP statement located on our website and I will put the link uh, in the chat as well uh, later on. So we do ask, everyone's been doing it so far, everyone have their cameras off, mics muted, that just makes it a little bit easier. Obviously my current students, when we get started, I will ask that you turn your um, mics and cameras on so that we can see you. Uh, I am doing booking, so one-on-one -on -one sessions. So if you have more questions about a specific program, because we're not really gonna be talking about that, this is more general about what to expect uh, when you come to college slash university essentially and so if you have specific questions i'll also put that link in the chat uh, for to book appointments so i'm doing appointments the rest of today uh, and then i have quite a few appointments for saturday as well uh, so with no further ado um, my name is kelsey baddock and i am the academic advisor for the university transfer program here at the college I am a past Lakeland alum, so I did do the UT program a few years ago. Uh, took my first two years of my Bachelor of Ed and then transferred to the UV uh, to finish that degree. I did teach for a few years, uh, but the college kind of um, sucked, sucked me back in and I haven't left. Um, and they're probably not going to get rid of me anytime soon. Uh, so again, if you have questions, please wait till the end or raise your hand if you have something that you absolutely want to ask. Uh, and then there is the chat if you don't feel comfortable speaking out loud. Um, so yeah, we will get started. So if all my current students, so Sarah, Tanner, uh, Haley, and Rebecca could turn on their cameras. Thank you. Um, so we will uh, let them introduce themselves. So we have a, a few different kind of program routes represented here. Uh, and then uh, we'll move on with the questions. So uh, Healy, I'm going to pick on you first because you are my least recent, I guess. Not my Chris. You've been here a little bit longer. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm Haley. Uh, I'm from Regina, Saskatchewan, and obviously, and uh, I'm just here taking my Bachelor of Science. I started in UT and I'm doing a collaboration degree with AU. Tanner, do you want to go next? Hello, I'm Tanner Stanley. I in the university transfer program and I'm going into elementary education for my B.Ed through the U of A. Sarah. Uh, my name is Sarah. I live here in Lloyd. I'm in the University Transfer Program for Commerce, and I plan to transfer to either the U of A or McEwen University. And last but not least, Rebecca. Hi, I'm Rebecca. Uh, I live in Lloyd, uh, and I'm doing the Elementary Education Program, and I'm going to do probably one year here, and then I'm going to do a combined degree uh, with the U of A. Um, so essentially, I don't know who wants to go. We can always, we can keep going in that same order if you want, or whoever wants to talk first. Uh, but why did you essentially choose Lakeland? I chose Lakeland because I thought it would be a good stepping stone in between high school and a bigger university. And I thought that that would make it a lot easier of a transition. You guys can keep your mics on if you wanted. That's OK. That should be OK with just the five of us. So that might be easier than muting and unmuting, or you guys are totally welcome to do that. Does anyone else want to add? I can go next. Uh, to add, I'm from Frog Lake. <laughs> so um, I chose Lakeland because it's close to home. So it's only an hour away. And just because it's smaller and felt more comfortable that way. I can go. Um, I chose Lakeland because I actually got offered a basketball scholarship to come play basketball here. So I'm on the team at the college and that's why I chose here. 
Uh, and I chose to come to Lakeland uh, for the same kind of reasons as Sarah. It's a nice stepping stone to go into a bigger university, especially with I mean, COVID hitting, <laughs> uh, as well as my dad works at the college. So it was kind of a nice place to come and comfortable. Awesome. So how is college different than high school? Who wants to attack that one first? I, I can it's go. I, oh, <laughs> I uh, graduated last year, um, so it's a little more recent. Uh, it's definitely bigger. Um, you got to be on top of your classes, getting um, your homework done much sooner than you would with uh, high school. You don't have the same amount as um, I guess pressure from teachers making sure that you get your assignments done. It's all on you. It's your own own. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's definitely more independent to give you an example. Like in my English class, the teacher doesn't give you deadlines on when you have to have certain chapters done. You just have to read it and be ready to write the essay when it's due. Anything else to kind of add in or like, what about the differences, especially like, so Sarah and Rebecca are, are my first years. Um, Tanner and Haley have been here two plus years. Um, so that maybe they don't maybe remember as much. Um, but how long do you spend working on subjects outside of class? Like I found in high school, even though it was many years ago, um, you spent more time doing homework in class than you did outside. Is that still, would you all agree with that? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I found I didn't really get time to get, like to get anything done in class. In class you listen and then after class you spend more than class time catching up on stuff. So they do yeah. say that you are supposed to spend, for every hour you spend in class, you should be spending one to two hours outside of class. Do you think that that is fairly on par? Would you say that's yeah. maybe a little, Oh no, that's that's on par. <laughs> um, if the Courtney who joined is is my current student or my HF student, you can turn your camera on, Courtney, and join in with us. If it's if it's if you're a perspective, that's totally fine. You don't have to turn your camera on. But I was supposed to have. Um, Courtney, are you? The HAP Courtney? Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you want to introduce yourself? Um. Sure thing. Um. I guess. Uh. My name's Courtney. I um. Am from Lloydminster originally. I went to Lloyd Comp. Um. And then I went to the U of S for two years. And then came back to Lloydminster. I took, um, I was going to take a year off, but I ended up only taking a couple months off and starting at Lakeland again in January when I found out about the ATIP program. And so I did a year and a half at Lakeland, and now I am, I guess, at the U of A with the ATIP program. So just to explain a little bit more. So if anyone has specific questions about ATIP, um, Courtney would be a great. Um, person to chat with. So when she says she's a U of A student, she is a U of A student, um, but she's currently doing all of her classes with us here on the Lloyd Minster campus, kind of. In a <laughs> non-COVID world, she would be on campus all the time, but they're doing, U of A is doing all their courses online. Uh, but they have a coordinator on campus with us. So Cody's here, um, I think almost every day, uh, to help them if they want or to have access to the room, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we just, so she's not a true Lakeland student at the moment, uh, but we still kind of consider that cohort ours as well. Um, so we're actually on question three. So what are some clubs and activities you've participated in? So that could be, so for my returning students, that could be past events. Obviously there's a lot less events happening. I don't know if anyone's joined in on some of the SA trivia nights or anything like that. 
Oh I haven't this year. I have in past years, though, done, like, movie nights, trivia nights. We had a succulent party one year on dorms, which was really fun, actually. Um, and I've gone to a lot of those things, but not Yeah, it's year. definitely, it's a little bit different every year, but we normally do have, so everything that Haley just mentioned, a lot of things that both residents as well as the Students Association would kind of um, host and, and do, so in-person kind of type events. Um, everything this year with the SA has been virtual. Uh, so far, um, we don't have any sports to watch because normally that's a pull for some students as well. Um, so things like that. Anyone else have any other activities, events, things that even you did fun that were last year? I haven't participated in anything this year, but I have noticed some different opportunities that I maybe hadn't seen in my high school years, like Speaker's Corner. Like you can improve your public speaking skills. And I thought that was really interesting. So. Yeah, so I didn't get a chance to check out Speaker's Corner, but they did host it in person uh, on mm -hmm. campus downstairs in the CAF. And so that is something hosted by the business program, but university transfer students are able to go. Um, I think a lot of them aren't fully thinking about public speaking and because you mm -hmm. guys are thinking, well, I still have three or more years until I'm out. I, why do I need to worry about public speaking now? Um, but it is a really great opportunity, especially if you are a little bit nervous. It's a really um, open atmosphere, not judgy, all that kind of stuff. So if you do have a chance, so they will be hosting more, I assume. So any of my students that might be a little nervous about public speaking, I think that would be a great thing. And yeah, well, I think they plan to do that for years to come. Uh, I don't believe anyone lives in residence at the moment, correct? Haley, you lived in dorms though. Can you give us a little bit of an update on that? On like, not like current, but like just what, and what it was, what it looked like. Uh, I really liked it because I stayed my first year and it was a really quick way to get to know the other four or five. There ended up that we started with seven of us in our house and ended up with four but it was a really good way to get to know people quickly and residents did a good job of pulling people in for nights to do things to involve people in residence or there's um competitions that happen monthly like if you shovel your pathway you get points and the house with the most points gets prizes and stuff they just do a really good job of making things like that fun and stuff I don't know if that helped at all <laughs> yeah for sure. And so everyone has their own room here in Lloydminster, so it's not set up the same as Vermillion. Uh, so that's kind of one bonus uh, to um, Vermillion. And you max live with eight people. And you and can lock your own like, room door. <laughs> yeah, Haley was saying you usually end up with like six to seven. And right now there's a max of four students in a, in a dorm. Um, what's the biggest piece of advice you could give to a first time college or university student who would like to go first? I can go first. I sure. would say know how to make a good review. I feel like in high school, a lot of teachers give you an outline for reviews still. Some teachers don't, but I feel like in college, you really have to be able to nail down the key points. So I think it, it's really important to, to know how to make a good review for your classes. Uh, I can go second. <laughs> uh, stay on track with your note taking and uh, and um, assignments and stuff you have because as soon as you start falling behind, it's a steep slope down. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's easy to procrastinate, but as long as you just get your assignments started, like that's the first step you need to take and then it just kind of flows from there. I'd say get to know the people in your classes. Nothing was more helpful to me than the people sitting beside me that could help me with my lab report if I didn't have a question. It's just easier to ask your classmates than your teacher sometimes and they get back to you faster and you can do it together. And so, okay, so everything that you guys, so what about if a student, I'm going to test you guys, what about if a student doesn't know how to write a good review or is really bad at procrastinating and doesn't know how to do time management who should they talk to 
not even a name. Does anyone, can anyone give me what department they should talk to? The commons. Correct, the commons, yeah. <laughs> so the commons can help with all that. So we have Karen um, that can help with all of those. Um, kind of, um, if you are a time procrastinator, I know I'm the worst, I'm really good at it. Um, I excel at procrastination. Uh, and so, and it's not really a thing that you normally want to excel at. So Karen can help with all those. So she can help to make sure that you're writing really good reviews. She can help to make sure that you're doing time management, all that kind of stuff. So that's a great source uh, to utilize. What about, what were you not prepared for and wish that you had known before attending? Um, I wasn't prepared for how fast time goes by. I kind of for my first two weeks was like, ah, oh, it's still the first two weeks. Like, it doesn't matter. And then all of a sudden it's October and midterms are here and everything's due at one time. There's like a two week span where everything happens and it's kind of overwhelming if you <laughs> don't realize that time flies. <laughs> I definitely agree with that. I feel like I have midterms and then essays and then reports or presentations so I, I don't think I was prepared for those moments where it doesn't feel like anything is happening and then all of a sudden everything is happening. Does so, anyone know how many weeks we are? Eight. More than eight. Oh, no, no, I don't mean what week we're on. How many weeks in total oh. we have? Sorry. I was like, <laughs> more than eight. 14. 14? Close, 13. Yeah, so it's 13 weeks that you guys have um, to get to kind of smash everything in, right? So from beginning to end. And you were going to say something, Rebecca, go ahead. Well, I was just like definitely their guys' points. And then as well as I wasn't prepared for how busy I was would be with, I mean, all those assignments and everything. Like I used to do a ton of um, outside activities after um, school. And then because my day ended at, let's say 315 and then I wouldn't have anything really after but now it's like okay now I got to do some homework after classes and everything else so. Any other additions to that one? Okay so my first years maybe haven't failed a class um, but has anyone ever failed a class or a test? Yes. Yeah, I failed the test. <laughs> it happens, right? Like we've all kind of been there. Um, do you think you learned from it and were able to like realize what had happened, I guess, essentially? Or why you failed or didn't do yeah. maybe hot on an exam or something? I feel like it made me realize that like it gave me that extra boost to realize that you need to study more and what I need to focus on more. There are certain parts in the course that I cared more about, I'll say, and then there are other parts that I didn't really focus on it. So it just made me see the bigger picture of it all. And I guess, okay, so I just, for these students that have joined, um, they were students that have either stood out in a classroom, so they talk, um, often do present, um, participate, that's the word I'm looking for. And so they weren't necessarily students. I didn't just send this out to just anyone. So this was all these students that are involved were rec um, recognized, that's the word I'm looking for, uh, by staff members. So when they say that they maybe haven't done well, or, you know, like these aren't, these are some of my top students, right? All my students are great. I'm not saying that none of them are bad, but I'm just saying like, it just shows that, that you can fail and you likely will. That jump from high school to college, and though we are college, these are university level courses. Um, otherwise we wouldn't have the transfer agreements that we do. And so, just something to kind of keep in mind. If you fail, it doesn't mean that you are done for or can't continue. Like you can keep up um, and still move on. So Courtney, I'm gonna pick on you a little bit because you did go to another school. 
So yep. Courtney did go to USAF for straight out of high school, correct? Yep. Didn't go as well as you probably would have liked. No, uh, I think the worst part is that like I took um, my 30 level like chemistry, physics and bio. So my first semester of university was like really easy because it was mostly just review of that. And I was like, oh, man, like this is nothing. I got this. And then the second semester came and we started with new materials. And that's when it kind of like took me back. And I was like, oh, wow, this like this is a lot of work. And I started to fall behind. And that was definitely when things kind of went down, but <laughs> it came back around. I just had to learn how to be a lot more organized and get ahead of my schooling. Yeah. Awesome. Does anyone have any other things to kind of add in maybe what they love about Lakeland, maybe what you don't love? That's okay too. Um, maybe anything like that. Putting you on the spot. I know this wasn't a question that I gave you. I just love that there's opportunity for whatever you like. There's groups of, there's an incredible amount of groups of things. We keep saying it's a small school and everything, but there's definitely a lot of opportunity to figure out where you fit in or what you like or join a group or do something like that. There's just lots of opportunity for everything and for everyone. So I think I like that a lot. Yeah, I definitely like that the classes are smaller. I've always liked liked that I, and I also feel like the professors are very approachable even though it's virtual I have had the opportunity to go in person for one of my classes um, and I've I've very much felt like the professors are very easy to talk to yes normally we have students like when I'm in I'm in my office today uh, normally when um, in previous years there's always lots of, of buzz down the hallways if essentially professors have office hours um, and I put that in quotations because honestly if they were in their office that is an office hour um, even if they were trying to do other things or anything like that so uh, generally our professors are really easy um, easily accessed and stuff but with most of them working from home it's definitely a little bit easier or a little bit tougher uh, but email and and we use Microsoft Teams quite a bit as a college so this um, what we're using right now. Anyone have anything else? Um, after going to the U.S., I can say that I definitely um, appreciate that I don't have to sign up for my classes by myself because that's really stressful. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, it seems just to build on everyone else. It's just it's a closer feeling like you get to know people that are in your classes a lot more and. You get to actually talk to the professors and get to know them, so that makes a big difference. Yeah, so our biggest class will be 70, and that would be like our um, science lectures, and psychology, can, psychology and sociology can get up a little bit more as well. But otherwise, our average class size is around the 28 mark, uh, so generally staying fairly small and very personal. Uh, mm -hmm. with your professors and stuff like that. So that's kind of a, a really good bonus. And then kind of like Courtney said, so when she says that she doesn't have to really pick her classes by herself, all classes are picked through me. Um, so I will help to guide you in the best way that I can to make sure that all the classes that you are taking will transfer to the institution that you're choosing. Uh, if you change your mind, that's totally fine. We can make adjustments. Uh, students do change their mind. Um, and adjust kind of where they're going or what they're thinking. So uh, that's kind of the, not to toot my own horn or essentially, but that is a big bonus. And I know I really like that when I came here first, meeting with an academic advisor to kind of walk me through it so that when I was left on my own to do it uh, at the U of A, I felt a little bit more confident in what I was choosing. Does anyone, in for our guests have any questions for us so you are welcome to turn your microphone on if you'd like to chat um, or if you don't feel comfortable with that you can definitely ask a question in the chat
I'm thinking that is a no. So I did just put the, oh, oh yeah. Um, so I did just put the website if you'd like to book a one-on-one -on -one session with myself. And then Mary Chris, um, our admin, just put in the email. So if you would like uh, some more information uh, or anything like that in terms of um, some of the documents that I have, or if you just have any questions, just email universitytransfer at lakelandcollege.ca. And yes, our courses do transfer to U of L Penny. And we also transfer to U of C. So uh, for U of L, um, most of our students go education. Um, and then with U of C, uh, we do vet, med, and uh, social work. Uh, but we do have uh, a lot of our courses to U of C were unspecified credit, but we've worked with that university to make it more specified which should open up the doors to a lot of other ones so sciences education and things like that to the university of calgary and then jackie is asking our current students to answer a question so uh, jackie is our dean of university transfer so who would like to attack that one first what would you tell your 17 year old self in grade 12. Well, I'll go. I'll start this. Okay. <laughs> I I did two years when I was 18, 17, 18, and I'm 25 now, and I just started back last year. And when I first started, I didn't really have the ambition that I do that I have now. So I'd say just to know what you're getting yourself into and be more prepared with it. Anyone else? Mine's kind of along the same lines, just like be be passionate about what you're into. Like when coming at a grade 12, you kind of come from like your small, I found I came from like my small little bubble into college. So like I didn't want to ask a question in class and I didn't want to whatever because I was going to be nervous or whatever. But in the long scheme, none of that really matters. So if you're passionate about something, just do it and do it to the best of your ability and as best as you can. Generally, if you have a question to ask, there's probably someone else in the class that has the exact same question that also doesn't want to ask it. So really, like they say, like there's no stupid questions. And I, I, I mean, I'm blonde. Um, and so I have definitely said things that I probably afterwards was like, well, oh, that was maybe a little bit silly. But there really is no dumb questions or silly questions, right? So there is probably someone else in that class thinking the same question and, and just not ready. So they'll, they'll love that you, you asked that question, that you got the courage to ask that question. Anyone else? Rebecca, Sarah, you guys are kind of not far from being, you guys are my grade 12. Is there anything that you would I would tell myself to relax a little bit. I was always a student who wanted 90s, high 90s, and uh, coming into college, that's hit hard. Um, and so just relax and enjoy the ride. Enjoy your experiences. Yeah, I'd say no matter how much work you have to do, you also have to take some time to relax I feel like I've definitely learned that because I was always one that wanted to get those grades as well but I also feel like it's important to to take that time to well go walk my dog or do whatever so out of the five of you and I'll even add myself in how many saw a decrease in their grades coming from grade 12 to your first year anyone not because I definitely did <laughs> yeah so I mean that's normal right I, like I said I, I always say this did anyone out of the five that are kind of able to nod their head at me um, <laughs> when you went from grade 11 to grade 12 I found that there was a pretty big jump of expectations right especially I mean I'm an Alberta student uh, so I did have to take my diploma exam so I, 
and I know Saskatchewan does similar idea, but not to the same extent as Alberta, uh, where you have to take it in every subject. Um, so I, I felt like there was a jump, like a little jump from, from grade 11 to grade 12. Anyone disagree? Expectations got a little bit tougher? No? I found the bigger jump was between grade 10 and 11 for me, but. Oh, okay. Okay. See, and I thought grade 11 was my easiest year. <laughs> um, and then that jump from grade 12 to to college or university or, or whatever it is, there's, there's another little leap. And I would say that that leaps a lot different. But I mean, you've gone from going September to June, and now you're going September to April, or right? And you've gone from 13 weeks of school, and then I'm, I'm not, I don't know what the weeks are for high school, but it's obviously longer. Uh, you've gone from doing homework in class and, you know, like whatever you didn't get done, you kind of did outside of class to, like Haley had said earlier, I think it was Haley, you're pretty much doing everything outside of class, right? So you are going to listen to the instructor. They're giving you some main points, maybe telling you what's going to be on the the final or the midterm or whatever to having to do all those readings outside of class, making sure that you're doing all the supplemental activities, all that kind of stuff. Agreed? For the most part. We've chatted about that. Do I have any other questions from some prospective students or anything that my current students want to add in that you think? I think like what you just said too, on top of that, you're going from living with your parents or family to being on your own. I mean, maybe not this year for a lot of people because <laughs> they're all home, but for the most part. So that adds the stress onto it too. Definitely, for sure. Okay, well, if there's no more questions, I won't make everyone sit here for 15 minutes. Um, we'll wait just a little bit longer in case someone else has a question, just a little bit. And so we, we did record the session, so if you ever wanted to go back and look at it, it will be posted on the website. Uh, if you have any questions um, further, you are more than welcome to book an appointment with myself, so the link is in there. Uh, so they're quick little 10-minute sessions over today and tomorrow. Uh, and then if you have any questions, maybe you're not able to book in and you'd like my handouts or anything like that, please email university transfer at lakelandcollege.ca and Mary Chris uh, will make sure that you're on the list for those documents and all that kind of stuff. I don't think there's any more questions, so I think uh, we are good to go. Thank you to my current students for attending and to all the perspective. Hopefully this answered a few questions or made you feel a little bit more at ease about attending. Uh, again, this isn't very course or program specific. It was mainly just uh, to get a feel for what university transfer might be like. Um, so if you do have course specific questions, I'd be more than happy to answer those in a session or by emailing the UT uh, email. I hope everyone has a good rest of the day and hopefully you get to check out a couple other sessions. I do another panel this afternoon. It is the same kind of questions, but it's with a few different uh, students. So some of the answers might be a little bit different, but for the most part, each session should be fairly similar. So if you're keen, really keen, you're definitely welcome to attend, but it will be very similar questions. You won't be missing out on um, too much or anything like that. So thank you again for attending and uh, have a good rest of the day. Thanks, guys. Oh, you're in your office, Jackie. You're muted, though. Yeah, I am. You are, too? Yeah. I just thought that would be slightly... Oh, I should stop recording.